Okay. <coughs> return from our last meeting. Um, the board requested a roof plan, cohesive after plans to match proposed scope of work. The board suggested to study the window pattern, trim detail, and the blank wall. This is the old one. This is the new one. Can we see the old one? Just a container. Sure. <clears throat> Stanley, this is his. Uh, yes, this is a These are pictures. This is from the last meeting. I'll give you that one. Yeah. Are you changing the siding or is just a window for the stucco? Uh, yes, stucco. Board and batten. Okay. Nope, everything's stucco this time. That's a change in stucco? Mm -hmm. Do you have a roof plan in here? Yes. This is the mist, and then this is the antique green. The mist is in the front section of the door, and then the mud room on the left side of the garage in the house. What's here? That's the existing garage. <clears throat> on the right side, you can't get any windows on the right side elevation, that monstrous black wall, black wall. Um, they, um that's the existing garage. Wait a minute, I'm that's... looking at the wrong one. You added windows. Just yes, I added one to the living room, but So what's your thought, what was your thought process on the canopy? It seems like you're... That's something that the homeowners liked. We had it on the first submittal too, and it was just a yeah, one story. I, I think I remember that from the first one, and it seemed to kind of maybe tie in a little bit better. It, it, <laughs> with, with this version, it seems a little more foreign. <laughs> um, I, I think that when you did have this one, it, there was some material there was another there was another kind of material and, yes. and slope that was similar so there was there was some relationships this one this now the way it's kind of evolved looks a little it looks a little foreign <clears throat> to I the rest of the uh to the rest of the uh the, the design this is what was were the roof the hip the hip roof before the portico Talking about the portico. Anyway. No, I know, but where the yeah. roof, I'm looking at the front elevation where they the hit first one, The first yeah. version kind of had some material similarities and some similarities with this piece. Oh, yes. Well, now it's all one material. Oh, and then uh, it seems like this is, it's, well, it's just the design is different now. Yeah. Are these lines, are you going to have these joints in the stucco? Yeah, it's just a stylistic element that they liked from. Uh, some samples they were looking at, but it shouldn't be too noticeable. Be pretty, pretty thin. I could convert the roof of the mudroom back to match the front too, or I'm not really sure. I thought it'd be better flat and just slope. You guys, you're talking about the covered porch and the entrance. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 It seemed to work. It just seemed to work on the, on the <laughs> first version. <clears throat> yeah, it's just it's something they like, and I'm, I tried to make it work. It's you know, it's not a typical uh, front porch roof, but. This doesn't work with anything else in the house in terms of roofs. Yeah, it's not. You've got the pitch anymore. over the garage, and then you've got the hip roofs, and then you're introducing yet another style. I think that's the only thing that doesn't really complement the, the rest of the facade. Yeah, and I, I don't think adding in the the, um, the yeah the, the 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 piece back from the the first version would would actually help it <laughs> all that much. Because that the second um, floor is pushed back, right? Like there's a recess yes. there that doesn't show up in that. Yes, I almost like I almost like the 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 version on the. Look, version two without without the stem. <laughs> I think they would be fine with making that roof flat at the entrance too. Because it would have the same look for the most part. <laughs> I think it would fit in better if it was flat. I agree with that. I mean they were okay with it in the last version. Pick so a yeah. pole from different versions yes. of, of what you have because it's it seems like we're we're cutting and pasting <laughs> onto something that you've um, clearly thought about different things, but it the yeah the, the the pitch for me just doesn't it doesn't. I, I think something flat would probably. Yeah, I think I can just um, would work better. And with all this investment on the house, nobody, the client doesn't have an interest. I mean, a few windows in a garage, it's a really nice thing to have, and you've got these enormous plank walls. <coughs> oh, they. <coughs> I mean, Sorry. as a percentage of your budget, I mean, it costs money to put a window in, but it's negligible. There's a major ambition for that. I think I can get away with a few windows to match the, the window in the living room. And if you get, you know, two yeah. or three of those vertical soldiers here, maybe two here. Yeah, they wouldn't have an issue with that. That would help a lot. Yeah. That's yeah, that's what he's saying. So if we flatten and we about flattening it, or sloping it, what are we what are we thinking? Flattening. Yeah. Yeah. Flattening. All right. So if you flatten, then you can draw this and come back after the next application and get approved for that if you want. If you draw in the windows here and here, three windows here, two here, and then in a logical spacing with the appropriate size windows, and redraw that, um, you can get approved. For that. Okay, just draw it on the. Yeah, draw it on. We wanted to. Throw my hand in uh, 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything in college by hand and then just didn't apply, it. didn't translate to the job. <laughs> oh, those blood hand. holders were awful. <laughs> 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 That's from high school for me. May lines, you ever made lines? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With the, with the, the, oh, the surface that, yeah, that surface, surface that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that surface you put on your desk. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the next application is via Zoom. Vladimir and phone. Let me just get the file. This is a new home? It said no way to cross from when you come up from the old firehouse. You get the intersection on the other side north of St. Louis. Can you share your photos on the screen, Vladimir? This house is not really visible from the main road. It's on a private uh, you know, shared driveway. 
to find a piece of land. So it, off my property. it was a tear down. So. Oh, <laughs> Houses on Shingle House Road. I mean, they're hard to, they're all pretty much set back behind a wall of trees in the summer. In the, in, correct, in the summer, that's when these, um, yes, these pictures are. So this is a, a it's a um, single family house on an undeveloped lot. Uh, the property, the house is it's on a flag lot actually, and the house is tucked in the middle of the woods, as you can see from the site plan. Here's Shingle House Road on the top of the screen here. Um, the house back here it's actually behind another property. Is this, uh, is, is this something trying to end your sense? That was developed. It was developed once before. They tore it down 20 years ago. Oh, that's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, people forgot. Okay, I'm sorry. Please continue. The elevations of the house, it's a, a mixture of um, horizontal siding and shingle siding. Um, there is a stone veneer water table around the base of the garage, typical corner boards, window casing, um, kind of standard stuff. Yes. I think on the front elevation, the second floor, I think it's bedroom two. I, I think you, know, it's, you, you see that on the first floor you have the left of the front entrance, two windows, and then uh, another door, and then above that is two windows. What's what's any reason why there's not an additional window above that third one, on that second floor? Um, You're walking in that bedroom number two, right? You get some nice natural light in front of you. Is, is there a plan for something in that area, or no, not really. I, we could add a window there. Maybe redistribute the two, so we're not adding costs. I mean, that's an option. I don't know. That's, that was just the first thing. I think everything else is 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 on the right track. That was just the first thing that I noticed. Uh, what do you guys think of the other of that gable over that area? Do you think and the change of siding? Is that not uh, well, thing a bit odd? I mean, mm -hmm. what I was going to say is I like. Th this is a very flat facade, both this and the back, which the, the comment is that seems a bit odd unless there's some reason to do it that way. I would articulate the facade a little bit and put different massings. I was guessing that the different materials was to make that less apparent. Um, mm -hmm. So the different materials is better than it all being the same material across a very flat mm -hmm. facade, but I would suggest you add some depth and pull some sections out or push them back. I yeah, it's a brand new house. I don't know why you'd make it just flat. <laughs> flat. Yeah, makes totally flat. flat.
Go ahead. There's an, over here. Right here. There, there is an ease of construction when the foundation is just rectangular. You start bumping things in and out. It just adds to the cost of the house. So this is a very expensive house, even flat. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's you know, I mean, much, much more modest houses have articulation. Well, you know, I don't, I don't count my clients um, money. Um, is there a client? There is. Yes. Is it a developer builder or is there somebody who's bought the house? Well, no, it's the, the, the builder is a developer, but there is, a, there is an owner um, there. I think their name is on the application. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I don't think it's an unreasonable request to have some articulation in a very expensive house to say that budget is the reason for cutting back. It's a very expensive house. I also wonder on the, if you look at the, the other side elevation, if you can turn to the other sheet. Oh no, not the one. The I'm sorry. Then, the, then it was. What was I looking at? But I'll be here. The uh, right side out. The other side out. Can you see that? One? Oh yeah. Okay. The bottom left. You have a blank wall. Yes. And I see in the floor plan you have walk-in closet and bathroom. Why? Why don't you flip the guest room in those two rooms so you can get windows on the end? And you know, it certainly would fit into the plan nicely anyway. The floor plan. Well, why don't you swap that? Swap what? The bathroom and the bedroom? No, the bathroom in the first floor. You've got a, a bathroom, a walk-in closet, and a bathroom on the on the outside of the house. If you flip flop that with a guest room and had them up against the stairs, you'd be able to keep your front window pattern, and you'd be able to introduce windows on the outside that would match the rest of the facade. And you could still get a door in the middle of the family room, so the guest room would you know, still function very nicely. Well, I, I could suggest that to my clients and see if they, they like that arrangement. Because we, you know, the Architecture Review Board frowns on big blank exterior facades. No. No. I, would, I, wouldn't call, I wouldn't call this a blank facade. There are there there are a lot of windows here. I mean, it's far from being blank. So there there's 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 a spot here without a window, but it's far from being a blank facade. Um, yeah, it's a it's a brand new house from scratch. So that doesn't seem to be to me to be a good reason why you should have a big blank spot. At least that's my thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I generally. I'm on the other end of the spectrum, not the whole blank facade point, but I mean, here, when you're starting brand new, just as a composition, looking at this side elevation, I mean, it, it, there does, and there doesn't seem to be a reason not to have one. It just, it doesn't seem fully composed. Well, I mean, the, 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 there, there's, you can't put a window there because of the floor plan. I mean, you know, right, which is why Bob suggested. Yeah, I know. But but sometimes functionally, you know, people people want their arrangement of rooms a certain way. We can't let the the exterior elevation always dictate the floor plan layout. But I will I, I will suggest I will suggest that to the client and see if they're if they are okay with with um, swapping. Put, uh, mirroring that, that space. Or maybe put a, put draw, a maybe in the draw it up for them in a window and show it to them because it'll look favorably. Put a window in the shower. I also wonder why, why is, you know, again, big, beautiful house, long, long, flat facade. Why do you have the garage on the front and you've got a big opening, single opening instead of, you know, more sculpted doors, single doors that might be sculpted or access on the side? Is there a reason in the site plan that can't be on the side? Um, yeah, you could easily drive into the side elevation there. 
you know, just kind of with, with a single big double, you know, two wide door looks kind of industrial for an otherwise handsome home. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a reason because of the topography why the garage isn't there, uh, door on the other side, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe you can look at that and see. Is there some type of a, some type of a setback? But I, I don't, I don't understand what the issue is with having the garage on this side, uh, front here. I'm, I'm just asking, just, you know, my, my, my thoughts, it's a very long, you know, house with the nice big windows and you've got a, you know, 25 foot wide, you know, it looks like a metal garage door if I'm reading right. Just yeah, it's it's a panel door. I think there's two panels there. And any comments? Uh, no, the only thing that I, I I do agree with that you know doing some bump outs or something just so it's not so much of a box. The garage door doesn't bother me. You're just talking about putting the garage on the other side, the door on the other side, correct? Well, either that or or maybe two single doors. I mean, configure it. I'm sorry? Just configure it differently. I mean, the depth and everything would be different, but. Okay, well, I could propose putting double doors to the client as well. Okay, so you we we'll, we'll meet again in two weeks. We we'll meet, we'll meet on uh, December twentieth. Yeah. All right, so we'll look at the exterior and and windows and blank spaces. We'll look at the garage. We'll look at some articulation in this this pure rectangle. And uh, I think and, something that just creates some shadow lines. I just you know just to the. I mean, just to get this point, it's so flat. There's not going to be even any shadow lines or anything created. So I don't know if that's just, yeah, just like you said, some articulation. So you'd be automatically on in two weeks. Um, Thanks, Vladimir. The thing how weird is doing it. It's so flat, and all of a sudden, yeah. it's like a line with different materials. And what do you do with that gel? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Seen that. What are they using? Just the one specific house that they're on? We're looking at the right house, the old historic oh, house. Oh, they were, they were going to do a cool thing. Oh, is that one looking different? Okay. I found you changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one looks different. I don't know if you cross out the slope roof or. Yeah, put it next to the top, I guess. And initial it. Oh, over right the side. Yeah. Initial. What else did we ask for? The windows on there. Yeah, the yeah, windows. Did you draw windows in the side? What about it here? There's a shed right behind that, so you can't see that back side. It's like one, I think it's about one foot off of the back of the garage. How big is the shed? It's across the whole thing. Oh. Okay. So where did we add There's windows to the elevations? Yeah, it's, right yeah, it's, it's right. the second to last sheet. It's like the gold one. The right side. Just the right side? First and second floor? Uh, just first floor. This is the lower section. Oh, this shit? Mm-hmm. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's... Are there windows on that shit? get in there. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they clean the leaves. <laughs> Um, I don't know how they're going to recite it either. Yeah, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. 
Who's that? Imagine that. Keep the Yes. I offered a demolition permit. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever Here's a you, blank. Whatever your changes are, yeah. Hey, I went into that shed because it had to be legalized. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I went in, when I opened the door, it triggered a beehive in the ground. And there right. were like a hundred of them. I couldn't get out for like 15 minutes. Get out. <laughs> Crazy. to my friend saying, yeah, I'm standing in the garage right now. Did you get stung? No. Yeah. I thought I was going to, but they, were, they weren't stopping. Hmm. Some of those things are impressive. Yeah. Right, you're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the space guy, the space ship ones came in and took out like a cantaloupe the size. Oh. Yeah, you'd want a full suit. <laughs> like, uh, I want nothing to do with that. Who lived in the right house? You know, Tom? It was part of the Reader's Digest. Yeah, I wonder who lived there. That's, that's a, a Gray Williams question. He definitely knows who in the, the family. Uh -huh. Is it old? Uh, 1830s. Oh. Is it going to be a house or a, uh, like a community? It's a community. It's going to be a clubhouse. Yeah. And then they're going to... Hey, it's awesome. But it looks like it's in bad shape. They want to, because we're talking, of, we're going to be talking about the chimneys tonight as well. The idea is to replicate the exterior of the building. The inside is going to be anything but what it is now. It's going to be a gym. Conference area offices. Well, what is there is really not that old. It's from the 50s and 60s. The building was refurbished back then. Come on. Same here. Yeah, I think the complex looks nice. Thank you. See somebody again. Jason got you with the rotors. All right. I'm Brian Corey, right. Carl from Design Bill. Then we have Tom Degnan with Carl from Design Bill. I'm going to take you to the main screen. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Jason got you. Everybody got this packet email to them, but we got it. Okay, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. It's not a color, is it? Colors? I actually. Or, I mean, this is one of the same. Yeah, they're in color. Yeah, it's got it. And then there's a full set if we need to. Something's not clear. I'll give it to Thank you. Get there. Yeah, here's the house. Yeah, that's the model. The model building. Yeah. So it's like you guys have taken off all the, the kind of the, the renovation type stuff to the historic. Yes, they yeah. have. Part of the agreement made years ago was to keep the main core building yeah. and all the wings were toward the wall. Yeah. They were not. They were added on at a later yeah. later date, and they were probably badly done. And... <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, they have the the pool. Mm. We're gonna have the 
have the historic part of the house and walk over. And you'll be able to use it. This is the part of the homeowners association. Mm -hmm. So you get your unit up there, you'll be. Yeah, I'll be stuck. Strolling over. <laughs> You're giving us a discount. Okay. Million three. <laughs> yeah, we, have, we have residents that move in. Yeah. How many occupied? Occupied. Uh, there's about 15 or so that have been sealed and closed. Mm -hmm. in there. And you have some sites already sold, I saw far as that even you're out, not even out of the ground. And Yep, we have some that we've yet to start construction on. I think you know, John's probably working on permits with you. Mm -hmm. we've sold. What's the total number of units going to be? 91. Wow. So we've got a, we've got approaching halfway sold mark, and we're past the 50% uh, building permit mark. This is that front facade and go right in there. Oh, this is what we're going to be talking about here. The old lady. I've sent them everything. They had no comment other than to say they were in favor of what was proposed. I advise them to come tonight. Mm -hmm. to If I may, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Dagman. I'm the president of Carrollton Design Building. I'm here with two of my colleagues tonight. One happens to be my client, Andrew Gottlieb from Toll Brothers, and Brian Coyle, who is our senior project manager uh, here with Carrollton. Uh, Carrollton is a historic name, but I'll spare you the detail. But we do a significant amount of uh, adaptive reuse and historic preservation type projects, including but not limited to, I think, Brian, I think I said the last one we did was a museum in the city of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where we took a bank and put a juxtaposed a, a modern addition onto it. And it's now the Susquehanna Art Museum. So uh, there's a number of uh, pictures in our portfolio of work here, if you'd like to look at it briefly before we depart, but uh, I'm happy to leave one behind, but it just shows our credentials as a design built firm. Uh, we are hired by Toll, Toll Brothers, you know, based on the fact that we've been doing clubhouse and clubhouse amenities for probably the better part of 12 years for Toll Brothers. They're, they're the client. Uh, oftentimes when the more challenging projects are involved, that involve historic adaptation, relocation, um preservation uh, we're oftentimes called into these type of projects so do you have any role in the new townhouse construction or just from this just piece? just just the clubhouse at the clubhouse amenity which is, of course uh includes the right house uh, renovation restoration so uh we will be re our firm will be responsible for the entire uh amenity component uh, other than that, Jason's uh, taking care of and is responsible for the rest of the development, in, in, which involves all the residential use. Um, that being said here, I think uh, uh, one of our, he's here to answer uh, any of your questions which you may have, uh, but generally speaking, uh, I think we're here to discuss uh, the White House in terms of past, present, future. Um, in recent months, uh, we've applied for uh, demolition permits, and as you're well aware, or, or maybe aware of, we've taken down some of the additions that were later add-ons. Um, what's remaining today, I think, is a representation of the original Wright House, which we understand is a historic uh, element here in town, and we are tasked with the 
preservation and adaptive reuse uh, of this building. So you may have seen us out there in uh, recent months where we've done a forensic, starting with the interior to uh, uh, to remove any asbestos laden materials, which the house was riddled with. We've taken off the numerous additions, which were not part of the original structure. We've really taken it down to the bare bones, with the exception of the exterior, which we're trying to preserve. That's our task, I think. Um, that being said, the building is old. Um, there are significant structural issues uh, that prevail here. Uh, we've worked with the local historic architects uh, and structural engineers to determine what can be salvaged, what can be restored, and of course, uh, what we would be doing in terms of replacement with in-kind materials on this. Of course, the clubhouse is a, is, a, is a rather different entity, which is, as you can imagine, is going to be strictly new construction. Um, generally speaking, the overall aesthetics uh, will complement the uh, townhouse buildings and residential components uh, of the community that Toll is building right now. So our aesthetics to the exterior uh, of the new clubhouse, as an example, will be you know, a cleft face, uh, uh, buried stone, uh, which I understand is a mandate, and that's what Toll is building here. So we're going to be replicating a lot of those particular type of finishes on the clubhouse. As far as the right house is concerned, we're trying to go back to uh, 1900, 1850, whatever it may be. But I think we're our task at hand right now is the preservation of the uh, two sides of the building, uh, which I understand uh, we'll be trying to preserve as much of the original components, for instance, windows. Um, if you were to look on, I, I believe there's, you know, say, 18 windows or so uh, of the existing 23 windows. Uh, which we're going to be work with historic preservationist craftsmen in terms of restoration of those windows. Uh, the remaining in the, the remaining windows in the dwelling would be a replication using a Marvin, which is uh, which is conducive to the original aesthetic, but it also has a insulated window. So on a go forward basis, we're trying to be cognizant that. A portion of this building, quite frankly, just the first floor of the right house would be a habitable dwelling for for the community use. And uh, I believe that consists of approximately 1,200 square feet, uh, which by and large consists of a conference room, uh, two bathrooms, and a fitness center. The residual of the building uh, will be strictly for mechanical use on the second floor. And the third floor, the intent is to transform it into just attic space. So no habitation, no storage, no nothing. Is there no, is there no way you could do something on the second floor or is the clubhouse just a one floor building? It's a one, it's a one floor, it's a one floor building. Now, for the record, structurally, uh, we're preserving the exterior of the building, but we are structurally reinforcing and we're rebuilding uh, with an endoskeleton the interior of the building, including but not limited to putting a whole new foundation system in because that building is literally just perched on a 30 inch wide stone foundation. No tie downs. If a hurricane were to come through here, uh, there's a possibility it's going bye bye. So foundation. I'm sorry. Like a rubble foundation. But the rubble vehicle foundation will stay, you know, in place. Um, uh, yes, it is a rubble foundation. Uh, it is original. I think there was a modification. They built a foundation within a foundation uh, years ago, probably when they added the commercial components of the kitchen. The weight of it could not sustain. So my my inclination is. It was originally an 18 inch thick foundation, but today if you go in there, 
it's uh, it's 30 inches at minimum. Uh, our intent going forward, you have to do a structural analysis. Uh, and at the behest of our structural engineer, we come up with a plan. We're, we're actually going to fill the basement in. We're putting our mechanicals on the second floor. And, uh, and then we're going to create a structural pad that we can, without moving the building, but just structurally secure it uh, to a functional foundation. So if, God forbid there was ever an earthquake or a storm. Um, it's going to stay intact, you know, hopefully for another 200 years. It's not a house of cards. <laughs> you can change the windows or you can keep the original windows. We are teaching, uh, if you, if you were to look at page, um, you know, for a minute. It doesn't have anything. Well, today, if you were to drive by, you'll see a number of those windows boarded up. We have boarded up those windows. <clears throat> so, I'm sorry, uh, <clears throat> We have a picture here yeah. of the White House with photos, and if you look at photograph eight, um, you'll see a number of windows that are currently boarded up. We boarded those windows up because we're taking the sash out right now. We're sending them off to a window preservation company here locally that will do the renovation restoration of these sashes. These sashes will be the authentic original uh sashes God, that were in the building. I can't believe they're still they're still viable <laughs> after this many years. I think we're tasked with making them viable <laughs> with at, at the same time respecting the original authenticity yeah. of oh, them. Yeah. So I, I know there's different firms like that do that that they will scan the old one and just make a new one out now, of with new wood and that would be a so. replication. Yeah. So uh, in this particular case uh we, we have chosen Marvin windows for the residual yeah. of the clubhouse. And I see the residual of the clubhouse. The right house will be part of the, of the, of the clubhouse. But that being said, um, I think the only difference between what we're proposing and what is existing, if you look at the town and, and the buildings that are being constructed there, they are black aluminum clad windows. We will be putting white clad aluminum clad windows with the authentic mullions consistent with mm. the existing right house, but they will be white so that, you know, we're paying homage to the right house. We don't want this sure. place to look schizophrenic. So it'll, it'll be, uh, it's identity will be slightly different from the houses across the street, but for the windows. Uh, we've got examples here of the exterior cladding, which will be a stone. There are, there are, photographic depictions in here. Uh, so we'll be replicating or matching that identical stone. We'll be using the same means methods of installation. Uh, when it comes to the right house proper, we did bring some. <clears throat> so as an example, um, this is the original siding on the right house right now. It is a half inch uh, cedar uh, beveled siding, uh, um, we're going to replace it with something slightly larger, but we will replicate the reveal so mm -hmm. that is a perfect match for the right sure. house. Um, so again, the right house has a, I think a five inch reveal, so it would look something similar to this. And as far as, uh, the roofing is concerned, um, we're, we, we're, we're removing some of the structural components, for instance, roofing. We'll keep the original rafters and so forth, but we will be replacing the roof. Um, oh, the, original roof. The, the original roof was a wood roof. So the original purlins are there. Uh, the original roof is there. Of course, compromise galore, uh, structurally, functionally. Um, I think probably during the last renovation, they put plywood over top of it and they put an asphalt roof over top of that. So again, consistent with the neighboring houses, we're putting an asphalt roof back on there. We're gonna remove the old roof. We're, we're preserving the rafters. We'll put new plywood down and then we'll put, <clears throat> but as far as our flashings and so forth, 
uh, whether it's lead coated or copper, we'll we we will we will put back you know authentic materials that replicate how it was built during its last mm -hmm. renovation. Let's just say fifty or a hundred years ago, but uh, uh, that is that is our intent. Yeah, what period of time are you looking to have the house look like from fifty years ago, hundred years ago? Well, uh, we are we are tasked with replicating and preserving <clears throat> what is there right now. Um, so that being said, uh, uh, with the exception of. Uh, So what right now is there, you know, is obviously uh, uh, double copper siding. Um, we're, again, we're preserving the authentic windows on two elevations of the building. Um, two of the other building, two of the other elevations had substantial additions, uh, and we've had to remove those additions. So there's gaping holes in the building. Uh, we're going to replicate the size, shape, mullion configuration. But that will be a new Marvin window. Um, and the only addition to the right house would then be uh, um, we will be inevitably putting a, a patio with a, with, a, with a shed roof that abuts the right house to the rear. But to the rear, to the rear elevation. What's the old glass in the Single pane kind of single, single pane. Uh, no, it's uh, believe it or not, it, the, the sash are old, but they're not 200 years old. I mean, we don't see any of the waves or, hmm. or 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 seed or movement of uh, uh, of the glass, which tells me the age of the sash. Again, it is old. If you look at the existing hardware, where they have, I call them breaks for lack of a better term. To, in the door, in the window at various elevations. Mm -hmm. I think by and large, the windows that we do replicate on the first floor at least, will be putting, we're removing all of the storm, storm panels and storm applications from probably 1960 or 1970 that you would typically see today, you know, a triple track storm window. We're removing all that. We're trying to get back to the original uh, the original restoration, uh, the original intent. Uh, I think Tom and I were talking about. In, uh, we have a detail right now, for instance, on one of the chimneys that shows some type of band. That band really should be a soldier coarse brick. So uh, there are there are two chimneys on the dwelling right now that I don't know for the life of me. I've been in the business quite a quite a long time, but I don't know how they're standing. But they're they're fake chimneys, and we fake chimneys which start at the floor line of the third floor. They're supported by two by sixes or six by sixes, but they are floating in midair. Do they never have fireplaces? Historically, there had to be a fireplace. They were they were chopped off, and then somehow supported when they were in the process of. of Basically, you're not going to reintroduce a fireplace on them. Oh, actually, in the in the existing structure, we will have no working fireplaces. Perhaps that's a liability type of, or, but uh, as, as Tom noted or Brian noted, uh, two of them were. I, I assume they were chopped off. They, they literally, it's just the last say six feet of or, or eight feet of the chimney. Which starts at the floor line and then protrudes through the roof. So what we're proposing to do is replicate that using conventional means and methods, which would be a stick frame, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. use use a a real brick, but it would be a thin brick because sure. we're we're concerned about the weight of the structure. Yeah, uh, we're told by a number of our consultants that once we start carrying that roof off of the dwelling the fear off. is it's a house of cards it yeah. would implode uh and obviously i think life safety comes first and foremost the aesthetic replicating it 
we can make it look like it was 200 years old. And you know, the good news here, it is a painted, they are painted chimneys. Mm -hmm. There is one last minor detail on the top of these that I had discussed with the historic uh, architects and that were, you know, there were some metal components or something like that that are <clears throat> penetrating the rooftop. We would like to conceal these chimneys so that we get no water migration down into it because it will degrade, you know, the integrity of those chimneys over time. So we'd like to cap them off with some type of masonry, maybe a piece of slate. You wouldn't even see it from the road. But uh, again, aesthetically from a purist, anybody who's seen this dwelling for the last uh, uh, 50 or 100 years, if you walk by, it would look like, it would look identical to what it looked like during its rest, the trust renovation. Tom, um, perhaps you can help me with an ear. It was in the mid-60s okay. when the Reader's Digest okay. invested into the structure. Okay. This was built on the Reader's Digest. Correct. This was one of the original farms in Chappaqua that would sell produce to the city. That's where the claim to fame came when the farmer became wealthy. So this was more of an upscale farmhouse because of his wealth. Okay. You say Grant Williams has seen all this and he's comfortable with it? Yes. Yes. Mr. Williams has walked the structure many times. He is, was notified of the meeting tonight, has seen all the proposed work. He has sent me an email saying they have no objection to the chimneys. And we have a historic architect, Stephen Tilly, monitoring the project for the as well. Okay. Any questions on the attached, you know, sections that are going on to the way? The, the new, the new yeah. stuff. So we're actually making comments on that? Or it's not going to be done in a separate? No, this is... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, we're we're so... chance, right? well, no, I like it. I like the... I think the scale is nice. I, I, um, it, I think that's a hard... It's actually a hard thing to do with that because of that, the right house, the, the scales and proportions are completely different than today's construction and everything. I think you've done a, a, a really good job of, of making the new stuff not dwarf the white right house. So I think it scale wise, I think it, it, I think it works. I think it works really well. I think, this works. <clears throat> I think the right house, it could have, it could have got kind of, sure. yeah. It, it could be that what's the what's the fitness place out there? The lifetime. Yeah. It could be a lifetime fitness next to the right house, but it's not. So I think it's I think it's well done. I so. think a, I, I I I recently saw a book cover or something like that, which was perhaps drafted by the historic society or something, but it talked about the uh, the revered and the historic right house. Uh, and again, I think Toll's intentions are to respect that, yeah, and, sure. uh, uh, and and our, like I said, they task us with doing what is proper. Uh, Maybe give some comments. You know, it's like kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Challenge and problem for you to deal with it. But I think in the end of the day, yeah, no, I mean, certainly Canadian residents are excited for it. I, I love the idea of having this preserved building there because 20 years from now, no one's going to know the history. You know, we're hearing the history now. I've lived in the town for over 30 years and I wasn't even aware of it, but um, I think it's important to maintain these types of buildings in town. And I think it works well with the rest of the build, rest of the, you know, the newer portions. So I'm happy that this is being done. The intent wasn't to make it look like the right house, right? That is correct. That is correct. But the, like, the right house is a distinctive building unto right. itself that this, this type of architecture is uncommon today. Yeah, the, the only similarity you would say are just, you know, you're complementing the windows and the colors, right? Uh, the, the window, I mean, the, the building is currently white. 
Uh, we will, we will, obviously on the rear and the left side of the building, we'll be placing a portion of those clapboards because obviously they've been torn off and are compromised. Uh, we will put the building back in its original white color, its white format. Uh, the residual, uh, in terms of the complementary building or the new clubhouse, uh, we'll be using that in lifetime materials, which I bought samples. These are, you know, cementitious products. Mm -hmm. Again, they're clapboard type, and it is an identical match to the buildings right across the street. So. We want this building to blend in with the neighborhood and with the new buildings that are going up, but we're still paying homage, you know, to the historic uh, identity of the uh, right house. What about the stone? Is it going to match the, the townhouse stone? Yes. Yes. Uh, we brought samples of that, right? <laughs> the, the connection piece to the right house, what is that? Referring to the covered walkway. Yes, so that is a predominantly a stone dwelling. Um, that is correct. For some reason, I, I saw these as, as like roof lines, but these are, this is beyond, right? Uh, that is correct. That's, is that the same stone that I saw? Yeah, yes, 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 it is. Yes. Right, that's the structure behind it. And it's a, it's a blend. Any, right. any Thoughts on like trying to make the connection piece a little less similar to the new build. Um, so maybe that is what is the the left siding kind of transition from the, the right house. The my, my 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 personal comment on that is, I think. We're trying to pay homage here to the right house in its original authentic form by juxtaposing, you know, transition pieces which match it. Um, those things, those type of things can be accomplished. I mean, I have blood told to their director to me to say, hey, we'd like to make this out of stone. Obviously, it's a, it's a, it, it, it is a more expensive means and methods. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, if there are two of these buildings, we call them bookends. Unfortunately, we only have one, but uh, much like the White House. I wouldn't want to attach a number of additions onto the White House uh, just because the you know, staff is growing. And uh, of course, here as a clubhouse, it's a necessity. So. We want the we do want the right house to be its its distinctive original structure, its original integrity, and to the best of our ability, we're trying to preserve that. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Timeline of this. Well, we, we are currently, uh, we, we actually started the uh, forensic deconstruction on the interior. That had to migrate to a minor exterior so that we could analyze and assess the sill plate, which is structurally compromised. It's either rotted or infested with, with termites. So it's gone. Uh -huh. Our challenge, obviously, is to rebuild an endoskeleton structure that we can tie the building down to a solid foundation. So hence, around the perimeter of that, of the right house on the interior, we're going to have a four foot wide, 12 inch thick footing, but it'll also be slab on grade, which will be consistent with the rest of the building. But that's the only way that we can come up with where we have a de minimis amount of wood touching concrete for a prolonged period of time. Because when it does, obviously it, it gets compromised because it wicks moisture, it will rot, decay, 
and it's, of course it's also susceptible to infestation. And that's exactly what's happened there over the past 200 years. And that's why we're here today, you know, okay. trying to come up with means and methods to preserve as much of the original. And, and again, our primary focus <coughs> is, is really on the exterior appearance because the interior bones, we are tasked with saving as much as can be saved. We're probably saving, if I had to guess, 80% of those interior bones. Uh, last question. Is this the pool equipment, is that in a closed uh, that, that, is a, that is going to be adjacent to the right house in a, in a fenced in area, approximately, if I would guess, 12, 12 foot by 12 foot. I'm sorry. No, this is the pool equipment. The pool itself will be an outdoor pool. So I believe. Yes, right take a, yes that's correct. And of course, that will be that will be landscaped as well, so that uh, you know we just don't want a a billboard type fence sticking out there. But you know we'll shroud that with landscape as well, uh, so that it kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. That's all great. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, ladies, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.